Awesome. Guys, well, listen, I want to uh, welcome you to the post-Valentine's Day edition of our leadership Zoom. Um, happy middle of February. And uh, we've got a treat in line for you today, guys. We got the uh, the one, the only. Yep, it's Carrie Santos's husband. Andy is on today. Uh, Andy started in this crazy business back in 2005. That means he's in his 17th year. That's right. His family heritage career will be able to legally vote uh, very soon. Uh, he's got 45 lifetime eagles. Uh, he became an agency owner in 2014. Man, has it been that long? Golly. Been on the growth council for two years um, and served extremely well. Uh, last year, his organization did over $5 million of net annualized premium. They grew 38% in premium, 26% in submits, and 40% in about the most important method uh, metric, which is recruiting. Excellent. This year, today, they're up right at 39%. It's, a, it's crazy how sales trails recruiting in our business. Uh, last week, um, they had their all-time, all-time record uh, with $242,000 of premium in a week. That's averaging, man, that's averaging 70,000 uh, excuse me, that's averaging in a, in a, in a six day, that's averaging 40,000 per day uh, over six days. And they had 40 submits. So uh, that is absolutely incredible. He is an avid CrossFitter, as you could tell, if you ever saw him at the pool uh, in Cabo or anywhere in Mexico or, or any place where a person, you know, can, uh, can take their shirt off. Um, it's amazing. Um, and he's one of the nicest human beings you will ever meet. Guys, I do want to encourage you to grab a pair of pins because there is a good chance the first one may melt based on the, the heat of this information that you get. But I, I give you guys the one, the only, Mr. Andy Santos. Mm. Thank you, Van. That, uh, by the way, before I get into it, this call has definitely um, been very fun to listen to so far. I love you guys. It's just kind of cracking jokes at each other and just the energy is, uh, is, is fun. It's, it's good to hear. So, and Van, I'm glad your voice is, is starting to come back a little bit, man. Hope you're feeling Thank better. You. All right. So I've got, uh, I've got some points. Some of these are general. Um, some of these are very specific, but I think they all can apply to uh, wherever you are in the business. So uh, I'm just going to run through these and I'm going to wrap up with a story at the end um, that will hopefully bring us home to remind us why we're, why we're here and really what we do. So um, first things first, I just believe that no matter where you are in your career, you need to, we all need to make a decision that this is your number one and only defining career that will set up the remainder of your entire life and maybe other people's entire lives as well. So um, I'll say that again. This is, you have to decide, this is it. This is your professional career. This is not something that will set up your next thing or that um, is something you just do for a while. This is the thing that will set up all the freedoms you want for the rest of your life. So you got to burn every bridge. You got to get your family fired up. If you're on this call, I'm sure your family's on board or you wouldn't be in leadership here, but you know, you've got to take ownership over your success. If it's going to be, it is up to me. There are no excuses. You absolutely have to decide this is it. Um, and when you decide this is it, you got to decide what you want. <clears throat> Key word there is what you want, not what Van wants, not what Kyle wants for you. It's what do you actually want? You know, um, when I came here, the last thing I came here for was to sell insurance. That was honestly, I, that was not why I came here. I came here to have the chance and the opportunity to get to develop people and get to be in leadership. Um, and so we always tell people this, we do not sell insurance. We develop people. And as a side effect, we happen to protect families um, with an awesome product. But decide what it is you want. Um, and make sure you know exactly what you want. Um, and um, 
because the more ownership you over have, you have in that decision for where you're taking your career, the better. Um, number three, buy into the sales talk. This might sound kind of funny talking to all the leaders, but I think this is something that has really helped us over the last, you know, year or so is just saying, okay, guys, some of us have been around a little bit. Some of us have seen iterations of the sales talk. We need one sales talk that we all can promise each other that we use 100% of the time in front of new people, no matter what. Um, you have to do and say exactly what you want your new people to say. Otherwise, they will be so confused and they'll turn into a freaking mush of stuff when they're out there in the field. So it's kind of like it's kind of like your rookies are musicians and they um, they're learning a sales talk and then they try to go up on stage on Friday night in front of a 20,000 person sold out concert and they go up on stage with the lights on and forget the lyrics because their trainer won't use the actual words that they're supposed to use. And so the new person doesn't know what they're supposed to say. So use the sales talk exactly like it's written and use the sales talk exactly like it's written when you're not with rookies. Therefore, you have it dialed in when you're with rookies. So um, I still, every single week when I go to the field, like tomorrow I'll be in the field all day long for nine hours. And I still review the sales talk before I go get in the field because I don't want to screw them up. So <clears throat> just recommit to using the sales talk. Number four, I would say, um, and I've kind of been on a renaissance on this and getting back into this uh, um, in a big way is um, invest in yourself by reading books. And we always hear this, like read a lot of books, um, but you have to do that actually. Um, so I read a lot of audio books. Um, the last two I read was, um, these are both last week. One was 11 Rings by Phil Jackson. Um, which is really entertaining as well, but it's so cool to kind of hear his, his concept of leadership um, throughout every single championship that, that, uh, that he's won, uh, 11 as a coach, and just hear the stories of the different, uh, you know, kind of cultures slash just that each team was a unique organism and how he went through all the different challenges with the different personalities and then I reread Shoe Dog last week by Phil Knight. Apparently, I'm reading books by Phil's, <laughs> but Shoe Dog last not, uh, last week was was so good to to just remind yourself of how hard you have to work and and how far you have to be willing to go to actually do something that's above average. A lot of people say they want to do things that are above average, but they go out and act as if they're doing something that's just barely above average. So you have to be willing to uh, just do way more um, than you think you have to do. So number five, uh, a lesson I've learned is don't be judicious with your time. So what does that mean? That just means you do not have to divide your time amongst your team members equally. You need to spend your time with the people that are worthy of you spending your time with them. And they need to know that you're not judicious with your time, that you're spending time with them because they kill it um, and they're on board fully. And then when you do that, they will learn to do that as well. If you've got your team trying to rescue people all the time that aren't putting in the work, um, that is not good. Uh, that's a huge issue I had in the past personally is I would always want to save people. I'd be like, oh, they're struggling. They're not doing this. And I would invest more time in those people than the time that were act than, than the time I would invest in the people who are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing um, and earning that opportunity to, um, to get help from me. So that shift was really hard for me to make, but man, it totally can change your culture. Um, and um, it's, it's just the right thing to do. Um, you're going to spend your time with the people that are building their business full on, full on. Um, and when someone's not doing what they're supposed to do, letting them know, you know, that you can't steer a parked car. You know, I, I'm not going to spend time with people that are at home playing video games all day. And I'll tell them that in the interview process. I'll tell them, listen, 
We will invest in you to help you be successful as long as you're investing in yourself. What do you think that means? And they all say, oh, well, you'll invest in me if I'm investing in myself. I'm like, yeah, if I find out you're playing video games all day, I can't spend time with you. So you can't steer a parked car. So as long as you're doing your dead level best, we will bend over backwards to help you. And so when people aren't letting them know, hey, listen, we can't help you if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So when you're ready to do what you're supposed to do, we'll, we'll bend over backwards to help you build your business again. Number uh, six. So this was uh, probably like the last six, eight months. This has been kind of my calling card is um, outwork everyone on your team. Period. Like if you're not outworking everyone on your team, I mean, I, I don't know where you're at right now or why you're not. Um, because if you expect to grow your business and you're not outworking everyone on your team, then I honestly don't even know what to say to you. Um, but you better start outworking everyone on your team. <laughs> Period. I mean, I, one of the best parts I ever saw was like probably my first year in the business and Van was on stage and in his own Van way said, beat your people. <laughs> he was like pretending to wave a stick and, and it was a perfect joke. But the reason why he had the number one team and was the number one agent in the same year was because he outworked everyone on his team. And it's amazing the respect you'll get from really high quality people when you outwork everyone else. And it's amazing um, how much respect you'll lose if you don't outwork everyone else or you're not putting in enough effort. So outwork everyone. Number seven, along the same lines, don't underestimate the amount of effort you'll have to put in, okay? Regardless of where you are on the career track, the next promotion, you have to be willing to overcompensate for your lack of skill with additional effort until you're good at that part of the job. So if I'm a field director and I want to become a market director and be a thriving market director who now is going to be running interviews and recruiting and, you know, um, maybe training someone on how to, how to be a recruiter for myself, like I have to go overboard with, with learning those skills. Um, I have to run a ton of interviews to get good at interviewing way more than I think. Um, <clears throat> I really feel like recruiting is just like selling. And you'll hear that sometimes and people be like, yeah, fill it, find a need and fill it. That's not what I mean. I mean, recruiting has a law of averages too. And one quarter in recruiting is like one week of selling. If you've got 25 demos in the field to have the law of averages work out or 30 demos in the field to protect five clients or 10 or whatever your closing percentage is, one week of selling is equivalent to one quarter of recruiting or maybe two. The law of averages is just elongated and you have to realize and be patient enough that it takes six months for the recruiting week to play out. It's not going to happen overnight. And every single week of that six month period of time, you got to put in the controllable activity to make the machine work. So you got to do a ton of interviews. You got to train a ton of people to have the law of averages work out. Um, <clears throat> number eight, again, some of these are pretty basic, but run your business like a business. Here's the metrics. It is your metrics, whether it's recruiting metrics, sales metrics, plus the sales talk, whether that's in the field or the sales talk and recruiting, plus a good attitude. Do you have a good, positive, expectant attitude? Metrics, sales talk, good attitude. That's how you do well at this. Um, pretty simple. Um, it's about the little things of running your business like a business too. You should tell your team, make sure they're, I said this the other day, make sure they're still sending thank you cards that are handwritten to every single policyholder. Um, one day after they make the sale, that's actually written by hand and they're getting that in the mail. Um, that will increase your whole team's A to T. And it's just vital. It's easy to forget in 2022. Um, number nine, set goals that matter to you and act like your life will end if you don't do all you can to achieve them. What's fun about this part is 
sometimes it's scary to be like, oh my gosh, I got to like work the hardest I've ever worked in my entire life every year of my business. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I thought we we're supposed to get to the point where we don't have to work as much. I think that's a mirage, honestly. Like what would it take for you to get to a point where you're not scared to look yourself in the mirror and go, holy crap, am I willing to work harder than I've ever worked before this year? Um, and I think I, I was romanced by, oh, you know, once you get to this point, you don't have to work as hard, you know, or maybe you don't have to work as hard or it's, it's, it's not, as, not as brutal, but that's not inspiring. Like, what are we striving for to get to a place where we don't have to work hard? Like, that's not who I want to be. That's not who I want other people to develop into. That's not the example I want to set for my own family. Like, oh, yeah, eventually you can be lazy. <laughs> like, it's just so silly that we even think that. So, you know, the whole act like your life will end thing is just how hard would you work or could you find a way to fix the problems you have if you had no other choice? If you're having a hard time with Indeed and you had a gun to your head saying, find a way to get the right amount of applicants you need to recruit your team, I guarantee you, you could figure out how to do that. Um, whatever, the, whatever the challenge is. So sometimes it's just a recalibration of like, maybe I won't tolerate this, this problem I'm experiencing right now any longer. And I'll just kind of double my sense of urgency and see what happens. Um, I think a huge thing is be around people that scare the crap out of you. Um, be around people that intimidate you, that you feel like you will let down if you don't show up. That's who we want to recruit because they're going to bring out the best in you. Okay. So make sure you're trying to recruit people that intimidate you. That you're like, holy cow, are they too good for me? Those are the people you need to recruit. Okay. Number 10, know what the renewal opportunity is. <laughs> we, we, we try to explain to new people all the time how incredible the opportunity is here financially. When's the last time you sat down and really figured out how incredible the renewal opportunity is for you? You guys, you can get to a place, every single person on this call, if you make a decision, can get to a place where you make twenty to $30,000 a month in renewals. That's nuts. In fact, you can, you can get to a place where you earn more than that every month in renewals. But I would say sit down and remind yourself on the opportunity you have in front of you. Um, I do that sometimes. And it just it's like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. So <clears throat> this is the one business that checks all the boxes. We get to work with people we like. We get to do something that actually matters. <laughs> and it gives you the opportunity to set yourself up forever. So if you're going to do something professionally, you might as well do something where you get the most return on your time. And so ask yourself, am I really maximizing this? Am I going to look back on this in 15 years and go, what was I doing? I got drafted to the NFL and I was showing up to half the practices. What was I doing? So we just have this crazy opportunity. And then number 11, um, embody excellence. So this year, we, we decided that our theme for 2022 is excellence. And so I define that as doing what you do not feel like doing all the time. Do what you don't feel like doing all the time. Because usually when you do what you don't feel like doing, that's exactly what you should be doing. <laughs> at least for me. So, <clears throat> so every day when I get up and I'm not perfect, obviously I screw up all the time, but this is the most forgiving business in the world. And you can mess so many things up and still do well is I, whenever I feel like I don't want to do something like, Oh, I don't feel like answering the phone tonight at this time. I don't feel like returning this call. I don't feel like speaking on this call. That was me last night at like 10 o'clock. I was like, crap, I forgot I was speaking on it. And then I was like, wait a minute. Excellence is doing what you don't feel like doing all the time. And I was like, yes, I will be on the call 100%. And when you have that trigger, 
It's like, oh, this is my trigger. This is it. I'm supposed to do this. Um, it's unbelievable how that matriculates to everyone else on your team. And when you're talking about doing what you don't feel like doing because it's the right thing to do, newsflash, spoiler alert, that's what successful people do. They're just not governed by what feels good right now. And quite honestly, you don't deserve to get to the point that you want to get to if you're not willing to do what you don't feel like doing. We all know this. So define whatever your trigger is for you, where when it goes off six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times a day, it, it, you recognize it and go, okay, and it just redirects what you're doing. So um, those are a few things. And the last thing is, um, hopefully this will bring it back home, is, is remember what you do matters. What you do matters. So all this talk about you know, renewals and building this huge team and we have this opportunity, but what's funny is at the end of the day and we're doing this stuff, the difference you're gonna make in someone's life, you can't even quantify. So I wanna tell a story to you guys from a few years ago um, that, that I always think about when, when I don't feel like doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And um, we were on a train more and, uh, and, and I, had, I had fortunately that week had had a good week and hit my goal by like Friday night um, that I'd set in the beginning of the week. And uh, it was just, we, all things were clicking. We were having a great week and it was Friday night and I'm sitting in the hot tub of the hotel across from a few people on the team. And um, I'd, I, I, my plan was to fly out on, um, on Saturday night. So I had a flight booked like it probably, like maybe it wasn't even Saturday night, like, like five 30. And, um, and so mentally, if you've ever been there, you know, you've hit your goal for the week and then some, and you're like, okay, cool. Like I, I'm kind of done, you know, I was like Friday night, I'm good. I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of coast, or maybe I'll just head to the airport early and drink some beer while I write my thank you cards and revel in my glory from having a, a, a great week. And, working really hard. And, um, so I'd kind of like checked out and anyway, we're in the hot tub and this kid looks at me, goes, Hey, Andy, man, can I follow you tomorrow? <laughs> and I was like, in my head, I was like, Oh man, uh, of course. But I was like, dang it. I guess I'm not done. You know, I got to go. So, so next morning we get up and we go out to the field and, um, I had a bunch of referrals still that I hadn't seen that I couldn't catch all week. So I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll work. And, and, um, Anyway, Eric's in the car with me and we go to this house that this was this family, Matt and Christy Nielsen, that I was trying to catch all week and couldn't catch him because he's a truck driver. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to catch this family. God dang it. So I drive up to their house and they're both home, both cars. I'm like, sweet. Well, cool. Knock on the door because um, they uh, it was Saturday. So I had to go to their house and uh, they just let me right in. They're a total ace. They're like, yep no objections. I'd already signed up the guy's sister earlier the week. And he was like, yep, sounds good. Cancer ICU. I'm like, cool. We protected one or two more clients that day. And uh, I remember being like, all right, nice. I'm kind of glad Eric told me he wanted to follow. I protected a couple more clients, you know? Um, well, fast forward about a year and I'm training a guy in the field and my phone rings and it's a Utah number four, three, five. And I'm like, uh Oh, great. Who's this? And, um, you know, the, the old, is this somebody who wants to cancel? Is this what's going on here? And the guy, you know, I answer the phone. He's like, Hey, Andy, it's Matt Nielsen. Um, you probably don't remember me, but you sold me a cancer policy a few, a couple of years ago, a year ago, whatever. Um, and I can't believe I got to tell you this. I was just waiting for it you know, for him to say, we need to cancel our policy. And he goes, but, um, yeah, my son Damon's been diagnosed with leukemia and we're in Salt Lake city. And I don't know when we're going home and I have no idea what to do. And so I was like, oh my gosh, wow. Well, uh, you know, here's a claim form. I faxed it over. They filled it out. And he was like, he was like, okay, thanks. I'll, I'll call you if I have questions. I'm like, absolutely. And so I was like, whoa. And then three months later, I'm in my kitchen at my house and I saved his number from the first time. And he calls me again and he's like, hey, Andy, it's Matt. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I saved your number. He goes, uh, hey, I got another question for you. What do I do with this, this, and this? And, um, and I stopped him at the end. I go, Hey, before we go, like, just out of curiosity, how much, how much have you collected so far? I was just curious. And he's like, so far, um, I over $50,000. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, man, it's been really helpful. We haven't been home in three months. And I was going, whoa. And that was the first time in my kitchen. It hit me like we, I, I can't believe he 
has been paid that much money. I mean, I know what the policy pays, but that's, that's awesome. You know, unfortunately his son was doing better at that point and he was very grateful. Um, and so <clears throat> I was feeling good about that. And, and a year or two later, we decided to fly back out to that place where we did the train more and, um, and resurface some clients. So we went out for four days and I was trying to catch them again. And I could not catch up with them because he's a truck driver. They're hard to catch again on Saturday before my flight. I finally catch up with Matt and Christy Nielsen. I walk in their house and picture this. There's a couch. There's me next to Matt. There's his daughter on the arm of the couch. There's two bar stools in the kitchen. Christy's on one and then Damon is on the other one. And he's got his hair growing back. His chemo port just got released or just got removed. And they're showing me the photo album of his whole journey through leukemia, um, where he lost all his weight, where the, the semi-pro hockey team came in from Salt Lake City and visited him in the hospital, um, all his heroes. And, uh, and it was just so moving. And then at the end, um, well, actually, what I did first is I said, hey, let me show you this heart policy, <laughs> because, you know, you never know what can happen especially after all this treatment and they did not buy the heart policy. It was just, they were gave me the money objection. I didn't want to push it, but before I left, Matt, we're saying our goodbyes and Matt like stops me and he goes, Andy, I just got to tell you this real quick, but, and he just looks me dead in the eye and he's like, there's like five people in my life that are the most important people in my life. And you're one of them. And I just like lost it. We're all crying. And I left. And I'm like, holy shit, how the heck am I one of the most important people to this dude? I didn't even want to go to work that day. Literally, I had to get convinced to go to work that day because I had checked out. So do what you don't feel like doing because you never know who you're going to affect and you could have this same effect on somebody you haven't even met yet somebody you haven't even interviewed yet and we owe it to people to show up so um last part of this story was 2017 he calls me again and by this point we're friends he, he'll call me when he's driving his truck you know across the states and just just bs with me but he calls me and he's like hey man i got a quick question for you um I think I know the answer, but I just got to ask. He goes, Damon needs a heart transplant. I'm going, oh, shit. Like, are you kidding me? He goes, yeah, he's got all this problems with his heart now because of all the chemo. And he goes, I know the answer to this, but uh, he won't qualify for that heart plan, will he? And I was like, nope. Sorry, man, he won't. And he was like, damn it, I knew I should have bought that policy. <laughs> and um, Damon's still okay, you know, but he's on the heart transplant list um, waiting for a heart transplant. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, I share that story because at the end of the day, just we're so freaking lucky. Like, don't, don't feel bad for yourself, you know? If you're not where you're, you thought you'd be at this point, or if you're frustrated, or whatever like you're so freaking lucky to have the chance to do what you do um so lucky so take the freaking reset button and flip a switch because you can reinvent yourself anytime you want and make a decision that you're gonna kick ass from this point forward um and outwork everybody you work with and just freaking do what you don't feel like doing every single day. Um, and you'll wake up in six months like me. Literally nine months ago, I was struggling. And then I got around people that woke me up. And it allowed me to freaking be my best self. So um, we all have that chance. So that's all I wanted to share today, man. Uh, hopefully that was some good stuff. It definitely was. Thank you, Andy. You bet. Thank you. That is the uh, understatement of the year. Uh, yeah, Andy, thank you, Andy. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> Andy, I heard that story so many times, man, and every time it actually gave me tears. It, it actually make me weak every time, man. 
I appreciate you sharing it. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, guys, has anybody got, um, does anybody have a question? Uh, it's a great, great time if you do, because there's, you know, eight or nine other people on here that would benefit from hearing the answers as well. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask one here while you guys kind of gather your thoughts, but Andy, I had a question about number 10, where you said, know uh, what the renewal opportunity really is. Is there a specific tool that you use either for yourself or with other people that we could go over here as a group, not right now, but can go over as a group and, um, and then also then go pay it forward and go over with our, our individual agents? Um, yeah, there's, there's two of them. Um, and you all know what they are. We just probably don't use them very often or we'll flash them in the interview process and be like, the renewals are awesome. Unbelievable. And then how many demos you get today, <laughs> right? What's your advance? Um, so yeah, the, the old classic, you know, editable spreadsheet, um, that is timeless and very overwhelming because there's 5 million numbers on it. Um, but it's still really good. Like there's really nothing better than sitting down with someone's wife or husband if they're married and, and asking them, what would your life look like if you didn't ever have to work again? And how much income would you need? And then showing their spouse what's necessary to do that. The other one is that vision tool that that's pretty new van that you taught a part on um, uh, a while back in our AO, AO meeting. So that's been kind of fun to do like, I haven't done this with everyone, but to do with all the field directors that want to be market directors. Um, and they've, they've decided that not, Hey, how can I convince you to want to be a market director? But they've decided it because it doesn't really land with everybody else, but it's just to go, okay, well, let me show you a path to AO over five years. Um, and what that means in terms of renewals, but that one's cool because it shows them how many people they need to train. <laughs> And that's, that's, I think the best thing is like, oh, cool. You want to have $10,000 a month in renewals or 15,000, you need to train 39 people. <laughs> They're like, oh, whoa, that's a lot. Like I was in the field um, with one of our young leaders uh, last week and he's so good, so talented, wants to build a team. And I was like, how many people have you trained total? And he's like, probably like 12 or 13. And I was like, okay, yeah, well, you're probably going to need to train about a hundred people. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, dude, like, that's not that big a deal. That's a hundred people is only, you know, it's 12 people a quarter or over two years, or it's six, you know, nine people a quarter over three or six people a quarter over four. But if you train a hundred people, styles, you're you? going to take a call with Todd Styles. If you train on it. Todd, meet yourself. Oh, sorry, guys. It's all right. Anyways, so yeah, I just think it recalibrates people. Just to, I, that's that's the biggest thing I think it, for new leaders. Again, I'm not even talking about your topic, but that vision tool is good. But like everybody who's in there building their team, like don't get intimidated by the amount of people you got to train. That's just what it is. That's just what it, you got to train a lot more people than you think. Um, and um, overdoing that, you're going to get better and better at training. You're going to get more and more dialed in. Um, but just it, it'll, it'll allow you to not be as discouraged when somebody doesn't work, doesn't make it. Um, because if you only think you're, if you're in your head, you're like, I'm only going to train a small amount of people. When someone fails, it's like, oh, no, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. That's just how it is. This is hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it and it wouldn't pay so well. So it's just like, okay, it's just like the law of averages in, sell, in selling. Like, it's just, it, it'd be like, if you're frustrated with where your team is and you think a lot of people are quitting, that's like someone doing seven demos a week and complaining about the results. That's just how it is. Yeah. Thank you for that, man. That's yeah. uh, two awesome tools that need to get dusted anyway. off and re-shared. Re Thank you. Sorry. Every time I share that story, I'm like shooken up for like 10 minutes. So it's uh. Yeah, that was, that was good for me. The presenter always gets more out of it than the people they're presenting to. So that's exactly what I needed to hear from myself this morning as we start the day. Oof, I'm still wiping tears myself. <laughs> Andy, I think that's uh, I th 
thank you for the call because I mean, I, I, I took a good amount of notes, man, but you know, I think when people see what we do and how we pay people money, you know, I mean, I, it's those times where you wish you had somebody new with you that's struggling with the, whether they believe in it or not, you know, and uh, yeah. So I have my largest customer guys that we paid. It, it, it'll probably knock on a hundred grand when we're done, but he passed away last week. Um, but just tough. It, it was tough. So thank you, Andy. I appreciate that, man. You're welcome. Thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, Andy, definitely. Th thank you for sharing a, a part of yourself with us this morning, man. Uh, for sure. Lots of awesome notes, man. And uh, as always, it's always a pleasure to see you too, brother. So yeah, good to see you too, man. Andy, thanks. Uh, thanks for hopping on here. It's definitely um, a good call, Van. So um, I was sitting there thinking last week, riding down the road, just like from Van's perspective and how long he's been in the business. And I was thinking about claims, you know, how many claims have I helped file? which is a good number. And then you think about Todd, you start adding on to all the people that got brought into the business because of Van. And then you just multiply the amount of people that have used our coverage. It's like, holy crap, one person made all that happen. And I think the struggle for most people is the monotony of, you know, the very first week of a new agent. They realize, oh, is this what it is? My cold call? And then, you know, you're two years in, five years in. Oh, the monotony of just, uh, Justin Ellison said it best on stage few weeks ago it's just messy and it's nice hearing how messy it can get from other people because a lot of times I, I just view myself and my man you're doing a sh shitty job um but those struggles come and go but I will say it's the people that we have access to is really what makes this thing so powerful and I remember coming off the elevator in 2016 and um I hadn't even joined the business yet I think I just started. That's it. I didn't qualify for the trip, but Van was like, hey, man, be in Chicago. And I came off the elevator, and I just happened to run into you. And I looked back. I was like, you know, I saw your wife and your kids. I was like, man, that's a good-looking fella. I was like, and I immediately called my wife. I was like, hey, I want to be like that guy. You know, just somebody who's healthy, got, obviously has a healthy mind, who um, sticks and stays and makes it pay. And just, man, it's cool to be insulated by all you folks. And, again, like we hear Van all the time. And it's like the vanisms, what, you know, he's a book of knowledge, but then we can kind of hear it from somebody else. And, uh, man, I just, I appreciate you taking the time to hop on here. It's, uh, it's really cool. I, I appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Well, Zach. I appreciate, appreciate the edification. And that's, yeah. that's, isn't that funny? Those experiences you have when you're new and you were just run into somebody and you're like, huh, I'm going to remember that. Yeah, that when I was new, I ran into David Via Senor one time. This was like my third year in the business in the elevator, and I'd never talked to him before. <clears throat> and we got got in the elevator, and he turned and looked at me, and he goes, "When are you going to start working?" And I was like, heartbroken. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" The first words this dude speaks to me is, "When are you going to start working?" I was like, "Wow," but I never forgot it. You know what I mean? Never forgot it. Hopefully he, he thought no you were somebody else. That. What's that, brother? Hopefully he thought you were someone else. Yeah, yeah, he probably did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was what I needed to hear, though. It really was at the time. So Kyle got turned off to the call when you said if you're at home playing your Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Hey guys, I would uh I would encourage us. Andy gave us a dozen really good key points here i would uh and i'm sure we all wrote them all down it's uh it's now do we what do we do with this information um we've all got probably tons of notebooks full of tons of notes from meetings and calls and things like that but it's the ones that pick one or two of them and go out and implement them immediately so the law of diminishing intent doesn't kick in and then we end up just having another great call where we didn't didn't really make any change at all. So I, I would just encourage you guys, just circle two things on here, write them down on a card or a post-it note, take it out with you, set an alarm in your phone, whatever you need to do to remember to do it for these next two to three weeks until you start forming a habit. And uh, let's get some lasting, lasting change um, out of this call with Andy today because it was way too good to just go back to doing the same thing that we were doing yesterday and before. So Andy, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. Um, thanks for doing the, the hard right versus the easy wrong. 
<laughs> and uh, always. And um, and I, I really good. appreciate you, brother. Really appreciate, appreciate you. you have, too, man. have a great day. And leaders, let's go lead. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. Happy Tuesday. Have a great day, y'all. See you later. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.